Number 10, Josh Norman. Okay, 10. Now, listen, I'm not mad the at the best it. in the game. I have to give this guy credit. Now, he doesn't travel as much. He did it a little bit last year. He started to hear the whispers of people saying when there's a top-tier wide receiver, whether he's on the outside or the inside, whether he's right or left, you being as good as you are, how much you got paid, we're going to need you to travel, and he started to do that. He is one of the most aggressive cornerbacks in the game, and you have to put him on the list. He's up for any challenge, and he brings a different type of mindset to every defense. So when he got to Washington, they started to play differently. When he left Carolina, they started to play differently. So that's number 10. What's up, Schrager? I love Josh Norman. I think he's too low already. I would have him okay. top five in the league. I think just the fact that he talks spicy, he should be in the top five. But he gets to justify it two times against Odell this year, two times against Dez, Doug Baldwin as well. We'll see. All right. Well, let's go with number nine. Number nine on this list, one of the best young quarterbacks in the game, Marcus Peters. Listen, started off strong. You remember that incredible. rookie season? You're talking about playing the ball in the air. He can do it all. And here's the thing. You're paying attention to him right here. You see his eyes. He's not paying attention to the wide receiver right. when they're out there running routes. He pays attention to the quarterback. He plays eyes, hands, and he can get to the ball. Hand skills, when the ball's in the air, he plays it like a wide receiver. He thinks aggressively. Ooh, Pro Bowler each play. of his first two seasons. First team All-Pro 2016. The young man, <laughs> six interceptions, 20 passes. Nobody has more interceptions also the last rookie of the year, two right? years. 14. I get it. Nate, the bingo board, interception on his first professional play, got Peyton Manning benched in his final season. There's only nine, though. That's we better good. see some talent okay. at eight I now. Can't, I can't even think of eight guys better than, than Marcus Peters. But Nate so. can. How about you just wait a minute, All right. and let me finish my list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure, give me those eyes. Tell Let's me go. You're, you're, you're outsourcing. You didn't talk to me about number, this. Number eight, <laughs> friend of the show. Vontae Davis. Now we talked about Vontae Davis. We remember that emotional moment where he's getting cut and released and he's sitting there eyes wide. He's saying, can I call my grandma? This man has taken his career, had somewhat of a roller coaster ride of consistency. He's went to Indianapolis and become an absolute fantastic cornerback. I mean, he's aggressive. You can put him in cover one, cover three, cover two, one of the best in the game because he's so quick. It's his aggressiveness that I love, similar to his brother with the ball in his hands. On the other side, defensively, when he sees that ball, he sees a wide receiver, tight end, running back. He attacks. And I love the fact that he can play the ball as well as he does. And when he catches the ball, he thinks like a wide receiver and can get in the end zone. Ten press breakups on 74 targets. Doesn't have a lot of interceptions. But when, it's, when I'm talking about shut down corner, I'm talking about a guy that you can say, hey, Vontae, go over there yeah. and be as aggressive as you can. Are you going to stop a wide receiver 100% of mm -hmm. the time? No. But are you going to make more plays than give up plays? Yes, and that's Vontae. Sometimes not a lot of interceptions is a good thing. It means they're not trying you that much sometimes, Nate. Great Who's point. Who's next? Number Great seven. Point. Let's go number seven, the chain snatcher. Okay. Akeem Tlaib. Okay. Seven. seven. Now, this was tough for me because you look at the cornerbacks with the Broncos. I mean, you, you can really – Kind of jostle these guys back and forth. You got Chris Harris. You got to keep to leave. He had to make my top ten. One of the best in the game. Rangy, long. What I love about a keep, of course, he can make a play when the ball's in the air. But when he's at the line of scrimmage and he shoots that hand at you, he's going to throw off a wide receiver. And that's the worst thing as a wide receiver. You're seeing a, a, a cornerback that's just as tall with long arms. And as soon as he shoots the hand, you got to respond and then get back into your route. Most of the time, when a keep to leave is on you. The quarterback is dropping back. He sees the wide receiver, and he sees this long, rangy cornerback. He gets off you because he doesn't want to test that side. So I got to give Aqib Tlaib credit because he's one of the best in the game at what he does. Broncos going to have two guys on this list, Nate? Well, we'll see. Kyle. All right. We'll Aqib see. Aqib Tlaib led, led the league in chain snatched, for sure. That's true. Number one, everyone else has zero. Let's go with number six, one of the best nicknames in the game, the Jackrabbit, Janoris Jenkins. Ooh. Now, here's the thing. I, I, I talked about DRC, and I, I didn't know if I was going to go with DRC or go with Janoris, but Janoris, he has stepped up big. I remember facing this young man when he was in St. Louis, young, talented, fiery. He was talking to me all game. I'm coming at you, 13. You don't want none of this. And I remember throwing one of my lines that I usually throw at young guys. I was like, I don't know who you are, even though I did. I was like, we didn't game plan you, even though I did. And I was like, you better check my resume, young man. And then he came back. He was like, I'm at you all day. I caught the next ball, and I just mushed him in his face, just trying to show him that I was bigger, faster, stronger. And I realized at that moment, this young man 
is big, fast, and strong. And what he's done when, he's, when he came to the Giants with that, all, that defensive line in front of him, the safety behind him, he's very talented and aggressive at the line of scrimmage, and he can make plays with balls in the air. So Janoris Jenkins, one of the best in the game, could have cracked my top five, but he is one of the best shutdown corners in the game. Here's number five on this list. Shutdown corner, league leading interceptions with seven of them. Chargers, Casey Hayward. Casey now, Hayward. Now, I know this is a shock to some people. Young talent, but I'm Googling ball Casey skills, Hayward. tremendous ball skills, tremendous. Now, numbers alone will get this man in the top 10. But when you start paying attention to what he was able to do last year with that Chargers defense that was getting attacked from a lot of different angles. He was making play after play. I loved him. He had 20 pass breakups, PBUs, along with the seven interceptions. So what does that tell you about his ball skills and him trying to stop wide receivers? He is a talent to pay attention Ooh. to this season because he's very aggressive, especially when you put him in cover two with safety help over the top. It's not always just about the one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's how you play within the scheme that you're in. And you'll see him playing a lot more shut-down coverage, man-on-man -man coverage this upcoming season. He doesn't all the Packers fans throughout the season being like, why did we let him walk in free agency? It was Making a 54% passer rating against him last year. That was second in the entire NFL. Aggressive, Nate. Aggressive. Nothing I hate more than a conservative corner. I don't want that. Give me That's, a guy who makes a play. You want aggressive? Well, I got aggressive coming okay. up right here at number four. A guy with the Minnesota Vikings just locked up a massive $78 yep. million dollar contract, an extension. Skull Vikes, I see you, Rich. Xavier Rhodes. Now, we were saying all season last year, Rhodes closed. That was big. Rhodes closed. He was shutting down. I want you to look at his frame. Look how big he is. This man is about 6'3 with his cleats on. And a guy that can get up in the face of a wide receiver, play underneath him, play the hips, and then track the ball. He's doing a little bit of everything. You're terrified. Odell Beckham. That was a big, big get time me. game. He held him to three catches, 23 yards. A Monday night he, game. Whole country now, watching. Check him out right here. Aggressive, seeking the ball, running the route for the wide receiver, diving, going parallel to the ground. Here we are again, again. against Odell. This is something real, Nate. So this is what's good about Xavier Rhodes. He plays great with his hands, stays on top or underneath the wide receiver, doesn't panic. He goes straight to the eye, locates the ball, and then makes a play on the ball. A lot of young wide receivers going up against young cornerbacks, we know that they can't play the ball in the air. But a guy like Xavier Rose, he's not just looking at the eyes and the hands to try to shoot through when we catch it. He's looking at the quarterback, tracking the ball, and becoming a receiver once the ball is in the this air. That's what you were looking for, Brant? This is, this is not the one I was looking for, but I love Rhodes. Nate, love why Rhodes. is it so hard to play against a big corner? Because when you're at the line of scrimmage, we have to get low naturally. So we lower our center so we can get into a running position and make a move. And if you got a big corner that's sitting on top of you, you're almost looking up at him. And I'd rather have a short corner knowing right away I have an advantage. If I get off of him, use my hands, I can make a play. But if I'm a big corner up against a shorter wide receiver, I'm shooting one hand, two hands. And if you can't get off of that, then the quarterback... Mm. is going to get off of you and go somewhere else. Now, Nate, I've got about eight names swimming in my head. I know you I've do. I've got Joe Hayden in my head. I've, yep. got, I've got Stephon Gilmore Joe in my Hayden head. Joe Hayden a little banged up last year. you got three left. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to narrow it down, but I'm curious to hear. All right. Well, how about this? Let's go with Broncos cornerback. I already had a key to leave on this list, so you know I'm going with Chris Harris. <laughs> Chris That's Harris. my guy. I love That's this your guy. guy. Three-time pro bowler. Chris Harris is an absolute beast. You always look at this Broncos defense and you talk about Von Miller, you talk about that line, you talk about that back end, but Chris Harris has been holding it down at the cornerback position ever since we've been respecting this new strong defense for the Denver Broncos. Chris Harris held the league's leader, T.Y. Hilton, four catches, 41 yards. And you Ooh. know how much we love T.Y. Yeah, T.Y. is an absolute beast, can run every route in the book and go over the top of you. So that just shows his versatility right there. And he is one of those anchors, quiet, underspoken, doesn't say much, but goes out there and puts in work with his pads. Four words, Nate. First team all pro. Not pro bowl, first team all pro. Well, the yeah. reason I, I fell in love with him in the offseason, he's always been a great player, yeah. but I'm watching the NFL's top 100, and they talk to players around the league about him. When they say Chris That's Harris it. Jr.'s name, they almost kind of sat back. And I'm talking about the guys in the LOB, other guys in the secondary gushed about him. So yeah. I'm in. I love it. it. Is. I liked when he had respect. the pick six of Mike Lennon in the preseason game. Oh, that was Lennon awesome, too, by the way. It took him two seconds to so make a play. So we have two Broncos on this list, which, which was Kyle's prediction, yep. right? These two, and they know each other from Kansas. They're like yeah. playing together a long time, dominant and scary out there. All right, number two on this list. This is a big spot. Four-time Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champ. 
Seahawks. Richard Sherman, you just mentioned the Legion of Boom. Richard Sherman is one of the main reasons why we respect Seattle and what they do. Check him out right here, making a play in the backfield. He's big, he's long. Think about him. He's not going to go out there and run a 4-2-4-3, but his ball skills when trying to break up the ball, the best in the game. And when he wants to high point it and go get it, he'll get the interception. Richard Sherman, extremely aggressive at the line of scrimmage. At times, as a receiver, you look at the ref and be like, ref, he's grabbing so much cloth, but he was so good at it. If you could subtly put your hands on a wide receiver, I'm not mad at it. The best DBs of all time are the ones that can get their hands on you without looking like they're holding you, and he is extremely aggressive. With that tall, long frame and those long arms, he's going to hold on to you. And they say he can do anything within five yards. He's controlling the wide receiver, and what he does so well is he will boom, boom, and then get right back into place. And as a receiver, if you're not ready, you either got to get shot in the chest and then relocate his hands, or you jump back and try to avoid him. And if you're doing that, you're wasting time. Quarterback's looking over there, what are you doing? <laughs> I got to get off you mm. and go somewhere else. That's how Richard Sherman, one of the best Hall of Fame career thus far. Means number one. Number one <clears throat> on this list. And some say <laughs> the most okay. versatile cornerback in the game. Cut from the old school cloth, Patrick. Peterson. Mm. He's on the Patrick throne. Patrick Peterson. Listen, three-time All-Pro. You want to talk about All-Pro? Three-time. I want you to pay attention to Patrick P. This young man is one of the best at getting the ball in his hands. That was a one-handed toe drag swag interception after he got done running the route up against one of the fastest wide receivers in the league. Oh. Check out how he plays through the hands. At that point, he's looking at the wide receiver, looking at his eyes, and then shooting through the ball. But he can track it like nobody else's business. This is one of the most impressive talents I've seen at the cornerback position. He's fast. He's explosive. He could jump high. I remember playing against Patrick Peterson, and I'm seeing Calvin Johnson and Patrick P. Go at it. I'm talking about two guys who I thought right away were going to be in the Hall of Fame, and this was Muhammad Ali. This was, this was rumble in the jungle. This was the best of the best going at it. And I remember it was back and forth, back and forth. It was old school. And then all of a sudden they put Patrick Peterson on offense, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, <laughs> what's going on here? Patrick Peterson lines up on the outside, goes in motion. We're thinking, reverse, reverse. He takes the ball, starts running to the opposite side of the field. The whole defense shifts. Right. Reverse, reverse. Stops his tracks, turns around. Now we're thinking, double reverse, get to the other. He's out running everybody, flowing in a different direction, picks his head up throws a rifle to the sideline to the tight end. One of the most beautiful plays I've ever seen. You have to have extreme athletic ability, football IQ, to pull that off. And I'm sitting on the sideline, me and Calvin Johnson, jaws dropped because we've seen one of the best corners go on offense and display every single skill set you need as a wide receiver and as a quarterback throwing the ball and getting a completion. So Patrick Peterson, the best in the game in my opinion.